Before this video gets started, I just want to say a couple things real quick. Uh, the I really enjoyed using Turo for our vacation. This is the second time I've done it. I think really using Turo to rent cars for vacations is a great way to learn uh, about a car you might be interested in, for one, because you can really find so many different types of cars on there. And usually, price-wise, it usually ends up being probably a little bit better than just renting a normal car uh, from your day-to-day, -day, like airport rentals. Usually, you can find a nicer car for about the same price, which is really cool if you if you think about it. But for this case and this video, I loved it because it really... Um, show me what it was like to live with the car. So go ahead and watch the video, see my thoughts on living with this Tesla. Model 3. This one is the basic Tesla Model 3, so it's only the rear-wheel drive. doesn't have a ton of range. Uh, the good things, the things that I've really liked about it for the trip so far is, even though it's not the long range, I've had plenty of range to get around to do the things we want to do. We're in Silverthorne, we've driven to Denver, to Estes Park, to Breckenridge, to Keystone, and it's done just fine. We've been, we haven't had any issues with charging. We even took it up to the top of Mount Evans, and that's up at like 14,000 feet. And the cool thing is, is coming down off the mountain, I gained like 23 or 25 miles of range coming down the mountain. So that was kind of cool. You're not gonna get that in a gas gasoline vehicle. You're not gonna gain, gain fuel just driving down a mountain. But there are some things about this car, driving-wise, that drive me bananas. So when you're on the highway, like on Highway 70 out here, it's, there's the right lane is really rough from semi. That's where all the semis are, so it's grooved, has potholes. And even without the autopilot on, just cruise control on, I try to avoid the potholes and the car is fighting me and trying to keep me in the middle of the lane. I'm trying to protect the car and it's not letting me do it. The other thing is when you're in cruise control, I've, I'm told this is an update issue and there's a new update that fixed it, but it drove me nuts. Our windshield was dirty and the wiper blades just kept going and I couldn't get them to stop. And when I, I tried to get them to stop and as soon as I hit cruise control on, it said I couldn't shut them off. So little things like that, they just are driving me crazy. Like I said, it's like an overbearing stepmother. It just won't let you fully drive the car when you're on the highway. Everywhere everywhere else, it's pretty much fine. It lets you drive, it'll kind of bing at you if you're going out of your lane. But for some reason, when you're on the highway, it just is too much. It, it doesn't fully let go, even when you're not in cruise control or using the autopilot feature. A couple of things that uh, also that kind of bug me about this, when it's in this autopilot mode and you want to change lanes and you don't have the full self-driving um, you have to signal and like kind of force it and when it lets go if you're not used to it it's like it feels jerky so it's kind of kind of annoying in that way so there's just things that you have to if you are buying one of these you have to get used to it it's really difficult to be smooth with at first because you fight it and then, and then it like let's go oh now it's freaking out on me oh look, take control immediately and that's i was in control the entire time frustrating so for that, it's like uh, it makes me not want to own one of these because it's driven me that nuts on the highway as we um, go in between these these cities here in Colorado. Um, but as an EV, it's great; it works just fine. You know, the charging is the supercharging system is awesome when you get a charger that is fast and charges the vehicle quickly, and you're on your way. Um, I've put about, we're gonna probably end up putting about 800 miles on this car and probably only gonna charge for about 30 to $40, which is, that's incredible when you think about that. That's really cool. So 
living with a Tesla, at least here in the mountains, with these road conditions, I haven't really liked it. I didn't really enjoy it. And I kind of feel bad saying that because I have two friends that have Teslas and love them. But I don't. I'm not as in love with these as I thought I was when I just drove them for a day. So those are my quick thoughts on just living with a Tesla day to day. Um, as an EV, it's a good car, but I think on the highway, it just tries too much to, to keep in control, and I don't like that. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to subscribe, and have an awesome day.